Welcome back. So far we've been talking about using Visual Studio in C++ and if you looked at uh, one of my previous videos, which if you haven't, I suggest you do by the way, <laughs> uh, I started talking about detailed output and uh, trying to actually find the setting in Visual Studio and you, you uh, had a little bit of fun watching me stumble around. I was actually able to locate the feature uh, that gives us a bit more detail. So I thought what I'd do is, uh, let's see, we will, let's, we will do a new project because remember we're trying to get used to working through this particular workflow. Uh, uh, empty project, we'll call this sample two. Go ahead and create the project. Go ahead and add our source file. keep the name simple because it doesn't really matter what you call the file uh, and we go ahead and fill some stuff in so that we can uh, have something to uh, demonstrate the output that we want to try and tune so let's put this in place uh, do our argc do our v our simple return and our hello world oops oh as an aside uh, you notice that I'm using the less than less than greater than greater than those actually uh, those are actually what's known as operators that work on the output stream. And we'll get into that in more detail for sure, but for right now, uh, I just wanted to point out that those actually mean something. So it does matter if you say this versus this, because you get an error that looks like this. If you're trying to use an operator that doesn't, uh, doesn't really work for operands where the operand is really uh, a string or this defined uh, this the output of this defined object it's just something to be mindful of all right so we save we build and with a little bit of luck <laughs> we ought to end up getting no errors so that I can show you the actual thing that this particular video is about okay so uh, as usual, we set our breakpoint just to look at the output. We check our output window, hello world, like we expect. So now that I've done that, oh, okay, so now let's actually go to the thing. So I was trying to show you how to set the debug option, well, the output. And when you go to tools options, you see that you've got an entire collection of things that you can change. But in our case, because we're working with projects and solutions, it's actually projects and solutions build and run. And then this, these two options here. Now, as an interesting aside, you can set the number of parallel project builds as well as uh, you can select when, uh, when you click run, if a project is out of date, it'll build or it won't build. Uh, on run, when you have errors, you can prompt, you can not prompt, you can launch the old version. So these are just two options that, that you control if you're making changes and you forgot to maybe save the file. When you try to click run, instead of it being out of date, it'll help you and just do a build. Just something to be mindful of. But the two options that we care about here are the uh, build output verbosity and the build log file verbosity. I've got it set to detailed, so I see a lot. But I can also say quiet, minimal, normal, detailed, diagnostic. And I'm, uh, I believe it goes from least amount of information to most amount of information. So this is useful when you wanna see the actual commands that are run by the uh, integrated development environment of Visual Studio. And also useful if you have a log file and you wanna get a lot of information that you can look at later if you're trying to track down a really tricky uh, tricky book, right? So if I go from what I had to 
the normal amount, which is by default it's set to normal. So if we clean and then rebuild, now notice immediately you don't see that much information here, right? So then when I go ahead and do a build, then you end up with this very small amount of information in your output window. So for me, uh, I like to not, I want to have a lot of information because I like to see what's going on behind the scenes. So that's why I set my projects and solutions build and run option for the project build output and the project build log file to detail so I can get a lot of information. And then when I do that, we look at, we do a rebuild and all of a sudden you see all of this information in your output window. Hopefully this video has been helpful and I'd love it if you, if you like, if you subscribe, if you leave comments, because together we'll both, we'll, you know, we'll get better at this, uh, this profession of software development in the real world. Uh, you know, as always, I'm hoping to make it a bit easier to kind of navigate uh, getting started as well as just you know refreshing your tools even learning new things because you might want to transition from one type of development to another say mobile development to systems level development or even web development to a language like the one we're working with right now which is C++. Uh, thanks again for viewing and I hope that you found this helpful and I'd love to you know see you again be able to talk again so we can we can level up together.